Welcome to Twilight Render's Getting Started video tutorial series. This is Introduction to Lighting. Please check the description for download links for this tutorial. Click on Edit uh, Create Light and you'll get the Edit Light dialog box. Right click and you can choose from Point, Spot, Projector, or IES light types. Choosing Point Light, this will provide an Omni Light which shines light in the same power out in all directions from the light source. You click a reference point, move away from the reference point, click the insertion point for the light, and finally the third click will be a target point. This is the same for all lights that you would insert. The target point doesn't matter for the point light, but if you want to convert that point into a spotlight, you can do it s just like that, and now the spotlight will be pointing wherever you chose as the third point of the targeting for that light. Let's change it back to point light. First thing you should note is that you can change the name of the light fixture so that you can find each one in the list, give them each u unique name so that you can easily find them later. In the tools you can pick a light to work on. You can turn all your lights on or off right here. The size or radius of the light is going to affect the soft shadow and also helps you to avoid intersecting geometry from adjacent light fixture geometry. If your light intersects geometry in the scene, it can cause light rendering artifacts and also slow down render times. So avoid sticking your light fixture, um, sticking your light object inside of a light fixture geometry. Next, you can choose uh, leave inverse square for attenuation and choose the light power. Remember to adjust your uh, lightness or darkness of your rendering. Always use the tone mapping, but um, if you want to choose the power for your light, you do so here. You can set it in watts or lumens. Let's look at watts first. The first default inserted light is a 100 watt incandescent light fixture. So for instance if you wanted to use an LED light fixture you should choose that and set an appropriate power let's say 3 watts. If you want to see a small light like that like a 3 watt LED choose a small light preview scene like the table lamp scene and now you can see what a 3 watt LED might look like. If you were to change that to a spotlight you could see what that 3 watt spotlight might look like. Changing the scene back to office and changing this back to a 100 watt incandescent light fixture. Now we can choose lumens. A 100 watt light might produce approximately 1300 lumens. You can know what lumens your light fixture pr um, produces by going to the catalog information for that light fixture. And here we can see that if this light fixture is using a source of a 13 watt compact fluorescent, it will provide 900 lumens. So in this scene we could choose watts, 13, and a compact fluorescent, CFL or we can actually choose the lumens itself and just type in 900 and we know that it's the rated lumen output for that light fixture. Finally, let's choose the color. When you open this dialog you might see the HSV tab but choose the RGB tab and you can choose the Kelvin color for your light fixture. So if we were to look at a color temperature chart, different LED lights have different color temperatures in Kelvin an incandescent light might have a 2800 Kelvin color temperature. Direct sunlight might be 4800. Clear metal halide 4000. So let's for instance type in 4000 and then hit convert. Click in the edit light dialog and it will update to show that warm light. It's always good if you're going for realism to choose the correct color for your light. Okay, so we're going to delete that and move on to Spotlight. Again, you're going to right click, choose Spot, click your reference point, insertion point, target point. If you choose the Select tool in SketchUp 
and then select your light right click and choose set light target anywhere you click in your scene you can accurately target your spotlight this works for spot target uh, projector target and IES light target the main difference between a point and a spotlight is the spotlight has two cones of light the hot spot where the full strength of the light is provided and then the fall off where the light falls off to zero in the distance between the hot spot and the fall off cone of light so if we change the fall off to 90 the cone of light updates to show you the 90 degree angle and then actually when you're choosing to target that light if we were to use the select tool and target that light you can see that cone of light actually showing where it's going to shine in the room in a quick preview so if we chose hotspot 60 the full strength of the light will be out to 60 degrees and then from 60 to 90 it will fall off to zero strength for that light if we wanted to mimic a can light this is a perfect setting 90 and 60 typical office down light if you want to mimic a 2x2 two two or a 60 centimeter by 60 centimeter typical light fixture for an office you might choose 170 degree fall off and 150 degree hot spot that'll give a nice uh, mimic for a 2x2 two two light fixture deleting that moving on we're going to insert a projector light this is great if you're doing stage lighting uh, maybe you're lighting um, a disco or uh, maybe you're lighting a conference room and you want to load either gobos or some uh, corporate logo or something into that light object so click reference point place the light object in the room and then choose a light target I'm gonna hold shift and lock onto the face in the back of the room and I'm gonna point it there if you're using Twilight Render version 2 Pro, you can use the Exploration Render and update the geometry to start that rendering. Now we can see that um, projector light shining on the back wall over there. So we just simply load a JPEG file in, set an appropriate power for that light fixture, so 900 watt projector light might be typical, maybe even 1300 watts. and then if you want to you can rotate that light any way you like if you inserted your JPEG and it came in upside down just rotate the light to get it to go right side up you can change the size of the image which is automatically set for you when you insert it but you could change it to 80 by 20 80 x 20 and that will give us this sort of ratio 20x80 gives us this sort of ratio and so forth so that's how you set your size for the JPEG we'll select and delete that light and go on to the last the IES or photometric light photometric light data is provided by different light manufacturers for each of their light fixtures photometric data is specific to a light fixture and it does not represent a light bulb it represents the entire light fixture. If you go to visalighting.com and go to the Miami pendant, for instance, you can download the catalog to get this um, specific information on the entire light fixture and its sources. But you can also download the photometric files in a zip file, unzip it, and load the IES into your light object. You can also download the SketchUp model for that light fixture. So here, we're going to load a few IES lights. Here I have a few examples that you have you have available to download from our description under the video. And we can load these IES files into this light fixture now and see what happens. If we load number four in there, you can see immediately that the light shape has changed. And it's trying to mimic exactly the light. Uh, how it's thrown in the uh, IES file. Here the light's thrown far out to the sides. In the previous one it's thrown straight down. 
Here it's thrown wide out towards the bottom and soft. Here it's thrown out to the sides, but then also strong down in the middle. So you can see that the light fixture, the way it changes when you insert the IES file will help you orient that the way it needs to be to represent your light fixture. Here it is if we shine it on the back wall. And if we load the other light IES file, that's how that light fixture might look. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you have any questions, please join our forum and ask away. If you like the video, please hit like and subscribe for more. And also, be sure to see the other tutorials available on our website, twilightrender.com.